Today we're going to be covering a topic basically falls under something called non-harmonic tones and also passing chords. And you can think of this as just simply a way of getting from one chord to another. So I've got a little basic chord progression over here, and it's in the key of C major. And the chord progression is going C major, up to G major, and then to A minor. And it sounds like this. And it feels a little unresolved to me, um, and that's probably because we are ending on uh, the sixth chord over here, which is the A minor, and probably intuitively your brain wants that to go somewhere else before it goes back to the first chord, the one. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to utilize here is called a passing chord. And like I said, it's just simply a chord that we're placing between two chords kind of like a stepping stone. And the most obvious one for me to use here would probably just to be go back to this specific chord here, this uh, G major chord. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna shorten this over here and I'm gonna copy these notes and just paste them here. And this is essentially our passing chord over here. So now if I play this progression, Okay, so now you can hear how this chord kind of helps the whole um, progression resolve, and it kind of ties this chord back to this one. It's, a, it's, it's like just a linking chord. It doesn't define the chord progression. Like if you had a melody written over the top of this, and the melody fit this progression perfectly, but the progression just didn't resolve, sometimes you, you know, if you had turned this into a progression like this, where you've got this now four, four bar chord progression um, that might actually make the melody feel different and like almost like recontextualize it and change the original vibe which is not always what you want and using a passing chord because you're landing so briefly on it can uh, can solve the problem by resolving the whole progression but it also uh, solves the problem a bit more gracefully because it doesn't change the context or the meaning of the, the whole chord progression and whatever melodies being played on top of it. This topic goes really deep with passing chords and um, another thing you can do, which I'm not going to get into, is passing chords don't have to be in the same key or scale that you're in. Because they're being played so briefly, they don't feel wrong if they're played out of key, um, but obviously you need to know what you're doing. You can't just choose any chord. Um, you're going to have to choose a very specific chord. Uh, to make that work, but I'm not going to get into that for now. We're going to keep this nice and short, and uh, we're going to explain the, the other terms that I spoke about. So the next uh, term I want to talk about is the passing tone. And let me just fix this and bring it back here. Yeah. So passing tone is when we take a note that's not in the original chord that we're in. So our original chord over here is C major, C, E, G. Um, so we can take a, a note that's not in that chord. So like A isn't in that chord, D isn't in that chord, F isn't in that chord. And we can use one of these to link these two chords together and make the movement from the C major into the G major a little bit more interesting. And when we're talking about passing tones, they typically work by moving up one step and then the next step being the next chord so or the high no, highest note in the next chord or the melody so in this case we've moved from g up a step to a and then up a step to b and this is our passing note and it sounds like this Okay, so that covers passing notes. And uh, another thing I forgot to mention is that passing notes don't doesn't have to be an upwards movement. It can also be a downwards movement. So if we wanted to move down a step here and then down another step, for example, we could do that. It just doesn't work really in this these between these two chords because of how they're laid out. We kind of just have to go up because we're walking up to the next note. So that's our passing note or passing tone. Next up is an escape tone. 
And an escape tone is the same thing as a passing tone. It just is different in that we move up a step and then we move down almost two steps. Uh, or in this case, they would call it moving up a step and then down a skip. And in music theory, the difference between a step and a skip is if you just having a look at your white notes on the keyboard, uh, a step would be like two neighboring white notes. And a skip would be if we skipped a step and then landed on the next note, that would be a skip. So if we're moving up a skip, it would be one note over here. And then we're moving down a skip. So up and then down. And these are also really powerful. And I hear this really often in dance music where they'll have quite a generic boring chord progression, but it just becomes super interesting because of these little um, escape tones that they use between each chord. And that sounds like this. And this is also like almost building a melody out of these chords, so it's giving it a bit more character. Um, so I'd really recommend using these techniques, especially if your chords are just sounding a little bit boring. Okay, so the next one is going to be called a neighboring tone. And neighboring tones, again, similar idea to this, except it works by moving away from our chord and then returning back to that same note. Okay, so if we had to like break this chord up, maybe into two chords, just repeating the same thing, a neighboring tone would then look something like this. So we've got the A, which is our original note, and then we're moving away from the A up to the B, and then back to the A. And that is our neighboring tone over here. And that'll sound like this. Okay, um, there's one more thing I want to just explain about these, and is that is the difference between an unaccented and an accented uh, passing tone or neighboring tone or escape tone. So you get accented, which means, oh, let's start with un unaccented. So unaccented is when you are playing the note before the next chord or between the chords like that, <clears throat> or let's say before the downbeat. So here we're playing this before this chord lands on the downbeat and that's unaccented and it's kind of like light. If you were playing this on the piano, this would probably have bit of a lower velocity. Um, and then an accented one, we would shift this onto the next chord and play it over there. So it's landing on the downbeat and that just means it's just stressed and emphasized a bit more. Um, it still serves the same purpose, but it does give it a whole different vibe. So this is how that sounds. And yeah, that sounds really nice to me. So whenever you're doing that, you can mess with accenting and un unaccenting them. So yeah, that pretty much uh, covers everything I wanted to talk about here. This is a super powerful tool. I use it a lot and I hear tons of other artists using it and I recommend you start using it too. And now you know what it's called and how it works and why it works. All right, catch you in the next tutorial.